SUVs used to be SUVs until Porsche jumped into the fray with the KN. Now we have the all new KN Turbo and it makes 541 bhp from its twin turbocharged V8 engine and it is so quick, so quick that in a proper Indian road with all kinds of surfaces, it's actually quicker than a sports car. But if you still want an old school SUV, Mercedes AMG, they've got an all new G-Wagon. This is the G63 AMG. It now gets 577 horsepower. It still looks old school. It still is a gangster, but it is more refined. But if you want luxury in the SUV space, it doesn't get better than the 4 crore Bentley Bentayga W12. 600 bhp, a W12 engine, massive, massive thing. And in terms of luxury, unmatchable. And now there is a bona fide super SUV, Lamborghini's Urus, 641 bhp. You drive it and you will not imagine you are in an SUV. It is faster than a sports car, faster than a supercar on our typical Indian roads. These four SUVs are the maddest SUVs you can get in the country today. Go dummy, go beast, oh no. I was on the receiving end yesterday of a long lecture from the Lamborghini PR people on how the Urus is the only super SUV in this test. The others may have V8, twin turbocharged V8, but the Lamborghini is the only super SUV. So please note, I call the others wild SUVs and the Urus is a super SUV. But semantics aside, the Urus really is mental. 641 bhp from the twin turbocharged v8 engine now of course this v8 engine is the same engine as in the kn turbo and in a lot of other audi and volkswagen group cars but here it's been massaged and massaged means it's been properly massaged to make 641 bhp 0 to 100 is well under four seconds 3.6 seconds and the main thing the lamborghini pr people told me is that you cannot put too many miles on the car so no bothering with how it rides and the comfort and everything we just go straight to corsa mode which is supposed to be the hardest mode first gear left foot on the brake launch control activated and fire oh, bloody hell <laughs> shit <laughs> the oro says <laughs> Bloody quick, bloody bloody quick. I've driven fast SUVs and I've called SUVs mental and faster than sports cars. But the Urus is an SUV that's faster than supercars. Bloody hell. The speed is unreal. And the handling too. Nothing accelerated like this. No SUV I've driven has accelerated like this. It really is a super SUV. It sounds also wild. It looks wild. This is a everyday usable Lamborghini and oh. <laughs> and okay, there goes our kilometer reading. And that's the Urus for you. A super SUV and boy. There's just so much I want to say about the Urus. There's so much more I want to drive. The handling, it is spectacular. I've never driven an SUV that goes around corners as quick. The pace it pulls around corners, the G-forces it pulls around corners, and yet there is barely any tire squeal, and that means it still can do so much more. It actually needs a racetrack to exploit its complete capability. And imagine me saying that for an SUV, you need a racetrack to exploit its handling abilities to the limit. It is phenomenal and it does all that handling while still riding quite well. In full hard Corsa mode, it still has good ride quality. This is a super SUV and it is actually in India faster than a supercar. For a supercar, you have to slow down for everything. Every single bump, pothole, whatever, you have to slow down. In this, you don't have to. You can carry on, you can thunder along every single road. It is a mad piece of engineering, a tour de force. Man, I really want to drive it some more, but our miles are up, it has to go back.
What an SUV, a super SUV. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear the locks slamming? That's what the G wagon is all about. Oh, another cool thing. It still has those old school bolsters. So if you turn left, the left bolster it uh, balloons up, so it holds you in place. This is supposed to be a new car. This is all new, but yet it reminds me so much of that old G63, which is actually such a cool thing. It doesn't give a flying f about sport handling and flying around corners. It just does this old school thing so well, with obviously some amount of modernity that was desperately lacking in that old G63. For starters, it's actually riding not too bad. The old G63 had zero suspension, but this one's going over speed breakers fine. It's like a normal SUV. That's a good start. It also sounds quite all right. Now let's see around the first corner. Oh, not not too bad. Oh, okay, it's nothing astonishing, but it's not too bad. But forget all of that. The G wagon is not about that. The G63 is not about corners. It's just about the old school charm. It's the worst to drive in this lot, yet it is the best to drive. Go figure. It's got so much character. Oh, I love it! I love it. Old school SUVs. They don't get any better than the G63. Oh, what joy! It actually is not scary anymore around corners. I must tell you that. The old G63 would it would make your knuckles go white going around corners. It would really scare you and would not go around corners. It refused to go around corners. The new G63 is not bad at all. It's still a ladder frame chassis. Now I must clarify: the G in G63 does not stand for gangster. It stands for Gelanden wagon, which is German for go anywhere. And if something has go anywhere in its name, we should take it. Off the road. I think let's do that. Play this when it all comes together. Yeah, when it can't get any better, but you better keep on grinding, keep on rising, keep on shining. They forget that you remind them what we call a perfect How fire. And I'm like, hey. If you just want an SUV for character, nothing comes close to the G63. Doesn't handle half as well as these other SUVs. It goes, huh? In a straight line, it really goes. 577 horsepower. It goes. Doesn't go around corners, but it goes. But the character that it oozes. Mm. And old school and how it still runs a ladder frame chassis it still has three locking differentials now we keep talking about the force Gurkha being like this mad off-roader that has two locking differentials this has three locking differentials nothing this side of a Land Cruiser can do what a G wagon can do and a Land Cruiser doesn't have half as much character as this doesn't make half as much noise, doesn't move half as quickly. <laughs> and compared to a Land Cruiser, this is actually seeming like good value for money. You would think that after the Lamborghini, it's all downhill from here. But then you step inside the Bentley and good grief, this thing is luxurious like you would not imagine. Now I have to tell you that Bentayga is two years old and it shows its age in the interiors. 
the clocks are analog uh, you got all these pull push knobs here lovely chromed beautiful knobs but it does feel a little old inside though honestly speaking i prefer nice analog clocks to all this digital stuff in all the cars and at least here it looks very unique in the lamborghini the interiors the instrument console the controls on the steering wheel they all feel very audi even the indicator stocks the wiper stocks actually even on the bentega these indicator stocks feel and remind me of audis but forget all of that let's focus on the luxury because the bentega is it's the bentley of suvs let's put it that way it is so luxurious the comfort is astonishing it is it just rolls over everything the pliancy the quality of the ride is brilliant and then you stick it in sport mode and this particular car has got the sport exhaust and it makes all sorts of angry noises it also ties down the suspension and it can go around corners this is a big heavy beast and it does feel big and heavy but boy oh boy does it move and what an engine a w12 engine it's the last of its kind nobody is ever going to make such phenomenal engineering led projects anymore so you just enjoy this engine enjoy its vast reserves of torque its power its thrust also and its phenomenal acceleration 600 horsepower it really really moves how quick is the w12 engine let's stick it into first floor it in it's it's just the torque it's not so much the horsepower but the torque that's propelling you forward it's like the hand of god is pushing you ahead and it's inexhaustible it just goes on and on what an engine totally irrelevant in our politically correct times but an engine that should be praised and should be enjoyed it feels wrong to be hustling the bentega but it can be hustled that's the great thing about this the bentega has got phenomenal luxury and great enjoyable driving dynamics too it's heavy there's no mistaking that it's big large heavy all of that but there is a joy to be piloting down these twisty roads at an obnoxious pace in this bentley another thing that's frightful about the bentley the price i said four crores for the bentega but apparently with the pound rate and the rupee rate all going through the roof it's actually four and a half and that's the starting price this particular test example that i'm driving is the first edition it's around six and a half seven crores the exhaust is optional that sides uh, the boards the side skirts that come out those are optional the bentega is an expensive car but it feels like an expensive car it feels like you spend a lot a lot of money on it The Cayenne is the SUV to have started this whole craze of sport SUVs. SUVs that handle better than sports cars. Now, on a race track, obviously the 911 will be quicker than a Cayenne. No matter Cayenne Turbo, Cayenne GTS, whatever. But on a real road, complete with you no know, bad surfaces, uh, spot holes, speed breakers, the Cayenne with its high seating position, great ride quality, and brilliant, brilliant handling. is actually quicker because you don't really have to slow down for anything and because you're sitting like an SUV high up you get better visibility so you know what is coming and the way they've engineered the Cayenne is insane Porsche are the center of excellence at the Volkswagen group and these are the guys who've developed this engine this platform and it's basically the same platform in the Bentayga as well as the Urus obviously worked upon and enhanced But Porsche they are the ones to have really done it well and they've done it 
brilliantly i love the can amongst all these other cars the can is the one that you can use on a daily basis it doesn't attract too much attention you can park it wherever you want and when you step on it <laughs> it moves it really moves like the wind 542 bhp 0 to 100 in a shade under 4 seconds 286 kilometers per hour top speed it's ridiculous how quick the can turbo is Porsche are now doing something similar to what Ferrari are doing with the Menetino so it's got the sport response dial over here you can put it in sport sport plus and then when you press the button in the center everything gets activated everything becomes hardcore and for 20 seconds you get complete hard response so you press it you get the sport response and then it just flies the thing that Porsche do so well is that everything is easy nothing is heavy the steering is not a big fat steering it is a nice little steering which actually gives you a lot of feedback a lot of feel nothing is overly heavy nothing is overly enhanced it is all quite pure now there's only that much purity that you can engineer into an suv but in that sense in that respect amongst all these suvs here or anywhere else the cane feels somehow the nicest to drive it's that purity is there it feels like a sports car the lambo is extrovert the bentley is opulent the g is just gangster the cane turbo i think is the suv for sport drivers the lamborghini that you realize that an suv can actually go quicker but you drive the cane turbo in isolation and there is no need no requirement for anything to go any quicker this is way way quick enough i also think that the cane looks very good but then that's a personal observation the lamborghini of course is in your face the bentley you can't miss it for the world and the g wagon come on i don't need to say anything but the cane is understated in this company at least it is understated and it does everything it's not a shouty suv it's for a pure driver somebody who just wants to drive doesn't want to do anything else doesn't want to announce his arrival to the world he just wants to drive wants to enjoy himself and unfortunately doesn't have a race track near his house so he has to do with whatever roads the government gives him and in that sense when you have to drive your suv on daily basis when you have to drive a car on a daily basis you need something that can absorb bumps potholes all other shit on the road and the cane does it brilliantly i am a porsche fanboy i'll admit that but even by my fanboy standards the cane turbo it's ridiculous how good it is everybody must drive a porsche everybody must have a porsche in their life Subscribe to the Evo India channel and hit the bell icon to keep pace with the thrill of driving.